Hello everyone, I am Prasad from the Structural Guide. Today we are going to discuss about type of taxing beams. Please subscribe our YouTube channel, you will get the notification on new videos. Why do you beam cracks? It may be a construction issue, design issues, thermal effects, corrosion of reinforcement, excessive loads, accidental loads. Those are the key things that uh, we may subject to a uh, corrosion, cracking, sorry. So let's discuss about this method in detail. Type of cracks in beams, bending cracks, shear cracks, torsional cracks, cracks due to the lack of hanger reinforcement, this we will discuss in detail. Thermal cracks, creep and sinkage cracks, carbonation effects, how does the carbonation cause cracking of the concrete? Corrosion of reinforcement, how it leads to cracking of the concrete. So those things will be discussed in today's discussion. Bending cracks. So it's a common type of cracks in the beams because it's uh, usually we can see in uh, when structures fail or when structure is about to fail we can see this type of cracks. Bending cracks caused by yielding of the reinforcements. Now if we have designed the structure correctly and also if the structure design it's in the under reinforced condition the cracks will appear before the failure. So if, if we, it's over reinforced there may be a sudden failure but cracks won't be ap appear before the failure. Correctly designed beam, even if it is overloaded, overloaded, or there is an issue, or or there is an issue, if it is under reinforcement, there will be warnings before cracking, before failure. So crack like this will appear in the beams from the bottom there to the top. It will be developed. So soffit also there will be cracks like this. So either side of the beam there will be crack like this. So with that we can identify uh, there seems to be a issue if these cracks are concentrated toward the mid span they are basically a bending cracks uh, in a such a situation we have to take actions so if we have to assess the beam and see whether there is a bending crack or any other type of cracks if it is a bending crack we have to do the retrofitting we have to improve the stiffness of the beam some kind of retrofitting method we may use to increase the stiffness of the beam. We may increase the size, we may fix the plate. Likewise, there are many methods to enhance the stiffness of the beam. So bending crack, we have to be careful and we have to take full attention on those kind of cracks. Next, we are going to discuss, discuss about shear cracks. Inadequate shear reinforcement is the key to shear cracks. If we haven't provided adequate reinforcement, this kind of a calf will appear. We have to differentiate, clearly identify the difference between shear crack and bending cracks. Uh, next, we will discuss about the torsional cracks. Sorry, we have to clearly identify the difference between shear cracks and torsional cracks. Next, we will be discuss about the torsional cracks. So, in, in torsional cracks, the cracks pattern is same as the shear crack pattern but the dip, the formation then continuation will be different you will see in the next slide so inadequate reinforcement or design errors may be the main reason no contractor may not put the reinforcement links shear links correctly those are the main reasons for the this kind of a cracks so if there's a cracks of this nature we have to attend on that it's a very if it is a bit larger, it's a very significant thing. So there may be failures, structural failures could occur due to these type of cracks. Torsional cracks. So we, as we saw previous years low, this uh, shear cracks and torsional crack almost same. You can see here the same pattern, same similar degree cracks will be there, but it's continue. You can see here it's continue along the surface so it's goal goes all over the section in the other side also similar crack will be appear so other side also there will be a cracks like this so 
other sides also will be a cut like this so this is right around the beam so with that we can identify the difference between the bending crack and sh shear crack scale this also caused uh, due to the excess and torsional stress on the beams so we have to provide the torsional links to avoid the torsional cracks now when during the construction or during the detailing we may do a mistake and we might uh, we might not do, we might we might not we might not uh, put the correct link now shear links is you know which at the corner we bend both the both the both the edges both the edges have the links will be at the same edge this is a normal shear link but in the torsion link its story is different so torsion links this bend in the two positions like this the corner sign the end sign the two opposite directions so therefore we have if you provide this links for the torsion is not correct so torsion we have to put the torsion link like this these kind of errors could also lead to a torsional torsional issue torsional shear link uh, issue so therefore we have to be careful during the design construction uh, and also if there are if you notice this kind of cracks we have to be careful lack of hanger reinforcement now, this is not commonly discussed topic but uh, it's also we have it's also some certain value and also we have to attend on this because this is very important there are structures fail due to this now if you can see in this figure here now this is the primary beam it's a primary beam we have a secondary beam supported on the primary beam this is the secondary beam this secondary beam forces will be applied on the primary beam so there should be links as shown in here there should be links to carry this load if you see the technicality behind this now in a beam when we say I am going to draw the shear, shear, shear post diagram. Now in a beam, now you have a shear post. Say, say it's like this. Now shear post diagram is like this in a beam where the now here we say this beam is supported here, right? So we have beam supported here. Then shear post diagram will be like this. Now uh, just just before the beam and just before and before after the beam the shear forces will be these values shear force will be these values but actually the total force applied here is this but we don't consider that so the we may design for the shear force like this and other side also we design for shear force like this but total force applied by the beam or second beam will be this high so this height has to be considered so this beam force has to be considered because this beam will act this will beam act on the shear force on this beam so this beam should be able to care that bear that applied load so therefore we have to have additional links like this these are called the hanger reinforcement hanger bars there are different methods to design you may refer some guideline so like this we have to have a hanger bars so these hanger bars will carry the load you can see here this this is the link so these are these links it's also links so we have to calculate the area of the hanger bars then we can we can provide those so at least this we have to consider this uh, beam height ratio and all to when we calculate the hanger bars so anyway we have to provide this hanger bar so if you are not providing hanger bars and if there are significant load on the primary beam there may be cracks like this that we have to keep in mind when you doing the design and construction thermal cracks thermal, thermal cracks it's quite common in the construction in the beams also there may be thermal cracks so beam when beam height, height is increases the surface cracks may appear in the beams so that we have to consider during the design so if you if you if you if you if you, if you consider a beam like this say it's the beam so say let me draw the beam so it's beam like this so 
when when we have uh, links here the main reinforcement here here also we may have a reinforcement now it's the, the, here to here there are no longitudinal bars so there may be cracks cracks like this in the beam so that that has to be considered during the design these cracks may appear so no 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 reinforcement no no longitudinal reinforcement to yeah, avoid, avoid these cracks maybe there may be vertical cracks there may be this kind of a crack so these uh, cracks will be controlled if we if we have provided the reinforcement here yeah i just draw the longitudinal reinforcement so in these portions you have to provide the reinforcement these spacings can be calculated depending on your standards you can calculate this spacing so if you know this spacing you can calculate the rein reinforcement requirement also it can be vice versa so therefore Anyway, you have to provide this height reinforcement bars when beam sizes increase. That's maybe you may follow the relevant standards for the spacing and diameter calculations, but you have to do that. Cracking due to creep. So this is uh, a very important thing to discuss because creep is a very important thing happened in the concrete. Creep is a creep is a material sand a material. is a material that undergoes continuous and permanent deformation under the permanent stress creep is caused by a material undergoing continuous continuous uh, deformation due to the applied loads it occurs even the stress significantly less than the stress you have to keep in mind that also even it is stress or even it is less stress this creep could occur this causes the increase in the strain without change in the stress because we don't change the loading but this this continuous deformation causes the addition of stress the creep strain can be significant influence of the long term deflection so there will due to the creep there will be a significant long term deflection so this long term deflection causes the cracking of the beam so as i mentioned now uh, without change in the stress or without change in the applied load the strain increases because the beam deform and the strain increases we don't change the stress in such a situations now you can you can see here the stress strain uh, relationship of the concrete this is a young modulus you you know the stress here and the strain there so strain changes but stress we don't change so we the elastic modulus so young's modulus has to be changed now when you when you do design for these kind of situations when you design for the creep uh, creep effect the easiest method to modify the young's modulus so the elastic modulus of the concrete when you take into account the long term deflections during the design this has to be done so so creep if depend on different different things different i mean the material properties also we have to consider when you design for the creep uh but we have to keep in mind when you do doing the design consider the long term deflection otherwise there may be cracks in the beams you may read all the stuff uh, in detail i have added the all the information you may required to refer so let's di discuss about the cracking due to sinkage what is sinkage sinkage is a change in the volume of the concrete this causes the additional strain on the concrete so with the uh, the the change in the volume causes additional stress that's also same as the creep it, without change in the loading this causes additional strain this is also related to the material this causes loss of the moisture during the curing and drying process that this is the uh, key thing this is maybe this is related to hydration also this is the key to this this has a two main component it's a drying sinkage and autogenous shrinking what's drying sinkage loss of water due to the capillary reaction then the concrete contracts additional strength develops this occurs over extended period of time then it causes long term deflection of the structures 
this also we have to consider during design if the this deflections when the this deflects are significant there may be cracks in the beams rotogenous uh, shrinkage is uh, that is occur at the early stage of coffee uh, result of uh, the pore water pressure is used for the hydration process with that in increasing on the water demand in the capillary is created this causes the tension and then as a result of that uh, blah blah you get the strain in the concrete and uh, this result excess to deflection on the concrete you may refer these uh, written things in detail you may get the good idea about that anyway we have to keep in mind when you design a structure you have to design it for creep it you have to design is for shrinkage so it those two factors affect on the long term deflection of the structure so we when you especially when you design a long spanning beams these has to be considered and the, these effects need to be considered and also if, if you have a higher section cross section area higher surface area of the section this will be critical those in those situations you have to be careful when we design next we are going to discuss about the corrosion of reinforcement due to the carbonation and how it causes cracking of the reinforce cracking of the concrete carbonation is a durability issue that causes uh, cracking of concrete carbon dioxide react with the concrete and it's damage the oxide layer around the reinforcement alkaline effect of the concrete will be will be changed by the carbon dioxide reaction the ph is uh, usually generally around 30 in in, in the in around the reinforcement area in a concrete with this uh, carbon dioxide reaction is low as about 9 or around around in that range value it being become value around that range with that with damage of this oxide layer or protection the it starts it, it start corrosion of the reinforcement if there are smaller cracks that air that is oxygen and moisture can penetrate into the reinforcement the corrosion will start this will increase the area around the reinforcement with the corrosion of the reinforcement internal volume increases this increase in the volume causes the cracking of the concrete. this is the cause of the spalling of concrete also internal volume increase then concrete will crack, crack further and uh, you you may get your reinforcement get more oxygen and moisture with that this corrosion will speed up and the concrete will further crack and spalling will occur the last thing today we are going to discuss about the chemical attack how chemical attack affect on the concrete and how chemical attack cause cracking of the concrete cracking of the concrete due to chemical attack that is uh, chloride sulfate are very aggressive chemicals we find in the construction and the designs that harm the structure those chemical could cause the corrosion of the reinforcement as discussed previously those corrosion could lead to the cracking of the concrete with the increase of the internal volume so structures very close to the sea area they, this is very severe so during the design we have to consider those aspects so adequate cover adequate concrete grade those things shall be selected based on the exposure class the minimum cement content also there are so we have to consider do these values actually the durability requirement you have to consider during the design if you consider those durability requirement those kind of cracks could be avoided so with that uh, we end the today discussion with the, today we are discuss about the type of cracks in the beams how it goes what are the remedies likewise we discuss more details so we would like to you all to request to subscribe our youtube channel thank you very much